As we count down to Earth Day this Friday, CBS News is launching our Earth 365 series. It's focusing on issues affecting the health of our planet year-round. The latest UN climate report warns that the world needs to move very quickly away from planet warming fossil fuels like coal, oil, and natural gas, stuff a lot of us use. The idea is to switch to cleaner forms of energy like wind and solar power, which are now cheaper and more abundant than ever before. But to ditch fossil fuels rapidly, a lot of experts and even some environmentalists say we also need to consider the nuclear option. Senior national and environmental correspondent Ben Tracy visited America's first new reactors in more than 30 years and learned that nuclear power could be poised for a comeback. And so this thing, that's the new reactor? That is. That, that's it. That is the newest nuclear reactor in the United States. There's two of them being built here outside Augusta, Georgia. When combined with these other reactors built in the 1980s, this will be the largest nuclear power plant in U.S. history. We're building the future of energy, and we think nuclear power is, is a ma major part of it. Chris Womack runs the Georgia Power Company, which is overseeing the final construction of the first nuclear reactors in the country in more than three decades. It's taken 10 years and costs more than $28 billion. So that is nuclear fuel in there. That is nuclear fuel there. He showed us this 47-foot deep sapphire pool loaded with nuclear fuel rods containing uranium that will enter the reactor and power a million homes. Why do we need this? Our customers need energy on a 24-7 basis. There needs to be a foundation of our electric grid that's available all the time. Right now, that foundation is fossil fuels, which are rapidly warming the planet, causing devastating and deadly changes to the climate. Coal, oil, and natural gas make up 61% of our energy supply in the U.S. Renewables such as wind and solar are 20%, and the nation's 56 nuclear plants make up the rest. Nuclear power creates no planet warming emissions, and when the wind isn't blowing and the sun isn't shining, the atoms are still splitting. It's reliable, it's safe, it's affordable, and it's very, very clean. If this is such a great form of power generation, why are these the only two reactors being built in the country? You know, we, we got away from it. Because the public turned against it. In the 1970s, concerns over nuclear waste and security fueled a nuclear power backlash. They have a serious condition. You get everybody into safety areas and make sure that they stay there. The 1979 film The China Syndrome stoked fears with a fictional meltdown at a nuclear power plant. Twelve days after it hit theaters, radioactive xenon gas is still being discharged. Life imitated art in Pennsylvania at the Three Mile Island nuclear facility. No one was killed, but then came 1986. U.S. officials believe the disaster at Chernobyl began on Friday. With the meltdown of Reactor 4 at Chernobyl in Ukraine when it was part of the Soviet Union became the worst nuclear disaster in history, directly killing 31 people and exposing millions more to the fallout. These accidents made nuclear power itself radioactive. Nuclear power is dead. It died at Three Mile Island. Dozens of planned nuclear projects were canceled and the U.S. doubled down on fossil fuels. But now nuclear power is once again making headlines as a way to potentially save the world from climate change. Electricity demand in the United States and really all around the world is only going up, 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 up. Alex as, Trembath uh, is deputy director of the Breakthrough Institute, a climate think tank. He says to electrify everything from our vehicles to our homes and businesses, we will need nuclear. There's no grid on the planet that relies overwhelmingly on wind and solar for more than even half of its electricity generation. So everywhere in the world where nuclear gets shut down, it's replaced largely by fossil fuels. After the 2011 meltdown of Japan's Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant, the Japanese and the Germans shut down most of their nuclear power. Coal and gas filled much of the void. The U.S. is on track to decommission nine nuclear power units in just eight years, including California's Diablo Canyon plant, which generates 10 percent of the state's electricity, far more than wind power provides. I don't know why we would, we would take this enormous 
piece of our, of our clean electricity pie and just throw it in the garbage. Trimbath argues the impacts of fossil fuels are killing far more people than nuclear power ever has. And nearly 80 scientists and academics recently signed a letter urging California's governor to keep Diablo Canyon open, warning that closing it is irresponsible and potentially catastrophic. Nuclear power has been getting its shot in the United States for at least five decades. Ralph Kavanaugh is with the Natural Resources Defense Council. He argues nuclear is too costly and takes too long to build to effectively help fight climate change. And there's also that other issue. Our failure to find a nuclear waste solution, which means that any community that hosts a nuclear power plant has to be prepared to also host its radioactive waste for centuries, if not longer. The nuclear industry is now touting a next generation of smaller, safer, and less expensive plants. Bill Gates is funding a company called TerraPower, which plans to build its first compact nuclear plant in Wyoming. I think people can come around. Chris Womack says he's excited to show that nuclear power has a future, despite being billions over budget. Nuclear power will be a reliable, stable fuel source for many, many years to come. In what could be a new atomic age. For CBS Mornings, I'm Ben Tracy in Waynesboro, Georgia. Well, something for everybody to mull over. I think Mr. Womack and Mr. Trimbath make some really interesting points about nuclear, but a lot of people are still holding on to those movies, The China Syndrome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then in the early 80s, it was uh, The Day After. Yeah, I remember that as a kid. Movie. That was yeah, a, that I scared remember every that child. Too. Yeah, that movie. Yeah, I think there still needs to be a re-education on nuclear energy. Yes. But hearing Ben Tracy being told it's reliable, safe, affordable, and clean, yeah. right, it does help put people at ease. And that point that, you know, fossil fuels are killing far more people than nuclear I that power was too. Right. has. I mean, exactly. I live in France, 70% or two-thirds of France's energy comes from nuclear power. Mm. There are ways to do it properly. There are ways to do it so that you don't see the things that we saw in Chernobyl or even Three Mile Island. That's right.